Hello there, friends, and welcome for today's Solasta guide. We have all about the Paladin class. Paladin surprised me because in Solasta they are, without a doubt, the class with the highest potential melee damage possible per attack. All thanks to your classic smite ability, which in Solasta works on every single enemy. They don't have to be evil for that. And the extra damage is really absurdly good. Together with the fact you can apply this on every single attack you have, it's definitely the easiest way to handle powerful foes like bosses, even on Cataclysm mode. This build will be mostly focused into damage to capitalize on that. But you'll still have decent enough defenses, at least to be an off tank of sorts. Plus you'll also have amazing healing potential because of your Lay on Hands ability. So without further ado, let us get into our Paladin build, first with character creation. Now when it comes to race, you have a few different options. My preferred pick here is Half Orc. This way you get a plus two to strength. And I want to go with strength with this build instead of dexterity, because well, I find the feats that rely on strength or two-handed weapons to be better for damage. Dual wielding has more defensive ones. Half Orcs also have a nice defensive ability called Relentless Endurance, which basically lets you avoid death once, right? If you are about to be reduced to zero hit points, you'll instead be reduced to one, but of course it only works once per rest. Still, it can help. Second, you also have another nice ability for extra damage, Savage Attacks, which increases your damage on critical hits. The extra bonus to Constitution can also help, because this character won't exactly be a tank, it's more of a damage dealer. Of course, if you want to go with Dexterity on, let's say, a Sword and Board Paladin for more armor class, go with Sylvan Elf for the extra movement, and the starter increase your Dexterity. Even Halflings can work for this purpose too, but they have even less movement, which is a bit annoying for melee. Anyways, half Fork is the way to go for me. Plus, I think it's rather amusing to be a half Fork Paladin, as always. Now, Paladin actually has a lot of unique class features, right? But most of them, I'm afraid, aren't particularly useful. The best one is definitely Lay on Hands. It's a very powerful ability because your healing pool can become quite large and you can restore a lot of HP at once. Cure Disease and Neutralize Poison aren't particularly useful, on the other hand. And at level 2, you'll get your Divine Smite at last to highly increase your damage, equal to 2d8 plus 1d8 per slot level above first, with an extra 1d8 whenever hitting an Undead or Fiend. For d you can truly pick anything you want, but Einar is the classic Lawful Good Paladin God. The background is also up to you, we already have the best proficiencies as a Paladin, with martial weapons and heavy armor. And by the way, heavy armor tanking actually works in Solasa, like Pathfinder, where it does work, but it's not as optimal as naked tanking. Anyways, Echo Light is a nice choice to me, it's fitting thematically. And you also get proficiency with potion crafting. Some potions can be quite useful in this game. Plus, this way we can also go for the classic Paladin personality flags for dialogue, with lawfulness, altruism, kindness and authority. But this is just for roleplaying, you can pick anything you want here, including another background. Now, for ability scores, ideally you want 118, 117, and 116 or 18. This way we can start with maxed strength, together with 18 constitution, also a very nice amount, because as I said, this character won't really be built for tanking, but you won't have very low AC anyways, because of plate armor and your very high hit points pool as a paladin. Then 16 charisma. Charisma is not that important for a paladin, I mean some of your abilities are based on it. 18 would of course be ideal, but you can't get by with 16 because rolling for higher stats than that is kinda annoying. The other stats are up to you, but... Well, to be fair, ideally a 14 here in dexterity for a plus 2, which can help with initiative, although for AC purposes it doesn't, at least when it comes to heavy armor. In any case, you can always go for point buy, then select free edit and, well, set your stats to whatever you want, right? It's up to you. For skills, athletics can help because when you are moving through certain obstacles and jumping, Solasta, which you'll have to do as a melee character with short range, well, you have to make a check sometimes and if you fail, you get stunned, which is kind of annoying. Besides that, persuasion can also help unless you have someone else capable of doing it, but you'll have a decent intimidation score. Languages don't matter much, but for the official campaign, Crown of the Magister, Old Tyrmerian is the best, although only a single character needs it. At level 2 you'll get your smite, as I explained before, together with Paladin spellcasting and a fighting style of choice. Ideally, great weapon of fighting because it can really increase your damage, 
whenever you roll a 1 or 2 on a damage die roll for attacks, you get to roll it again and pick the other result, even if it's lower. Honestly, rolling for a 1 on attack rolls is one of the most annoying feelings outside of critically missing, right? Because it's a lot of potential damage you are losing on, so this can really help you maximize it out. It has to be a two-handed weapon or a versatile weapon, however, but we'll be going two-handed anyways. There's also defense if you want higher bonuses to AC, but I don't think it's necessary for a paladin unless you want them to be your main tank. At level 3, we get our Sacred Oath. And you have two choices, I'd say. Oath of Devotion is better earlier, while Oath of Judgment is definitely the best pick later, at mid-levels plus. So Devotion gives you the Sacred Weapon ability, which is very good. For one minute, you get to add your Charisma modifier to your attack rolls with your weapon. Considering you can start with plus 3 or plus 4 to your Charisma, that's a lot of extra attack rolls you're adding even as early as level 3. However, the other Oath of Devotion abilities aren't particularly good. Although Purity of Spirit is nice, but comes super late. Oath of Judgment, on the other hand, is the one you want to maximize your damage, mostly for the level 7 Aura of Righteousness ability, which grants you an aura that increases the damage of all of your allies, including your own Paladin, equal to your proficiency bonus, which at this point will be plus 3, but it can increase to plus 4 and plus 5 as you level up. The Retribution ability is kinda okay-ish at most, because the extra damage you can inflict is not much, but at the very least it's a reaction, so it doesn't cost anything. Permanent protection from evil and good through Purity of Spirit is definitely better, but I think if you really want to increase your damage to the max, Judgment is the way to go. Weight of Justice can also help a bit, but bonus actions are better spent in attacking for a free two-handed hit, or dual wielding if you prefer. Also, Oath of Judgment has busted good spells, especially Haste at level 3, which you cannot get otherwise as a Paladin. And Haste is, well, Haste, it's always great. At level 4, you get to choose between an ability score or a feat, and ideally, to increase our damage further, we want feats. We already have the maximum strength anyways, and our constitution is super high for hit points too. Dexterity is not necessary, because plate armors don't allow you to apply your dexterity mod anyways. So let's go for a feat. Now, I've already covered the best of these feats in depth in my best feats guide. So for now, keep it simple. First, follow-up strike is definitely the way to go. This will provide you with an extra attack per round as a bonus action. While it does reduce damage, you can still apply smite to it for, well, a massive damage increase. This feat I find very important in Paladins because, unlike other classes such as Monk, they cannot get extra attacks through bonus action, at least not from class progression. With this we can overcome that. But of course you can just do a wield too, to have an extra attack as a bonus action. And the good thing is at level 5 you'll get an extra attack, so now you have a potential of 3 when you handing. At level 6 you get your Aura of Protection, which is quite helpful. It will grant your own Paladin and nearby allies a bonus to their saving throws equal to your Charisma modifier, which can result in quite a nice increase for a low numbers game like Solasta. Meanwhile, at level 7, if you went with Oath of Judgment, you'll get your very good Aura of Righteousness ability at last. At level 8, we want yet another feat. This time, Mighty Blow is the way to go. Whenever you attack with a two-handed weapon, you get to deal additional damage equal to half your strength modifier, so even at this level, it's already a plus 3, which you increase as we get boosts from gear and potions, to set our strength to let's say 27 even. At level 10 you get the Aura of Courage ability for fear immunity, I wouldn't say it's particularly useful because not many enemies use fear in Solasta, even on the Palace of Ice DLC. At level 11 you get Improved Divine Smite, which is quite amazing. It increases your damage by 1d8 Radiant, no matter if you are smiting the enemy or not. At level 12, we want another feat. And at this point, you can kinda go with anything you want. Since we already have massive bonuses to our damage, I will just focus into armor class feats, just in case. As at this point, including the Palace of Ice DLC, enemies start getting higher to hit bonuses. So first, Armor Master for a plus 1 to AC. We might as well level our character to 16 too, after all Palace of Ice is already in the game. At 14 you'll get Cleansing Touch, which isn't particularly useful, 
because it costs a full action, but it can help a bit. At level 15 you get Retribution from your Oath of Judgment, also not that good, but at least it's free. Now for the last level 16, another feat. And you might as well go with Forestalling Strength for yet another bonus to Armor class. Now, the reason I don't bother with Flawless Concentration is, for a Paladin, most of your spell slots will be spent in extra smite damage, right? And you don't have that many good concentration spells outside of, let's say, Divine Favor and Shield of Faith early. I just don't think it's as needed as with a full-blown spellcaster with level 1 to level 9 spells. But you can pick it if you want, including even earlier. To me, it's for stalling strength. Now, let's just do a quick section on what spells you prepare as a Paladin. And remember, I already have a best arcane and divine spells guide where I cover everything here in depth. Early game, you probably want Shield of Faith, to increase the AC of your tank or even your own Paladin, together with Divine Favor, which is very good in that it increases your damage by 1d4 Radiant, all of your attacks. And both Shield of Faith and Favor can be cast as bonus action, so you still retain the ability to attack in the same turn. Guiding Bolt, on the other hand, from the Oath of Judgment, can provide a nice ranged ability just in case. You can go for Blast 2 and Cure Wounds just for healing, but you have your Lay on Hands ability. Aid, I would rather leave it to a Cleric, but if you don't have one, you can use it for a Paladin. Branding Smite I find a bit poor. While it's cast as a bonus action, it's just for the next attack, right? A single attack. Meanwhile, Divine Favor is for all of your attacks during the duration. For level 3, honestly, you'll just be using Haste, most likely. And for level 4, you have Banishment, which is nice, from your Oath, but it only hits a single enemy. And Death Ward, I suppose, can help, because at the very least it doesn't require concentration. But as an Orc, you already have a racial ability that does the same. Create Food can be good too, if you don't have anyone else that can cast it, or the Good Berry Druid spell. And I guess Daylight, but it's not necessary. Revivify, of course, too, but you can just use Scrolls of it as a Paladin. Alright, now let us cover gear for our Paladin Half Orc. When it comes to armor, full plates, of course, plus one, plus two, eventually plus three. The handy backpack, as always, for higher carrying capacity. The Belt of Fire Giant is one of the best items for this build, any strength build, really, because it simply sets your strength to 25, which is huge, right? That's way more than you can get with dexterity at the price of coming somewhat late, I mean, you can do the entire Palace of Ice DLC with it, because you can get it from one of the factions during the main campaign, and if you don't, you can still get it during Palace of Ice anyways. Besides that, don't forget you have access to very powerful potions that also set your strength to high scores even as up as 27, and they all last for a very long time, one hour of real time, enough for any dungeon. The rest of the accessories are up to you, for example, you can go a heavier AC boosting path, I just have one ring here that increases AC and saves by plus one. There's also another ring for plus two, also a cloak for plus one, or even the cloak of displacement. But when you consider we can cast the haste spell for 26 AC, well, I don't think it's that necessary for an off tank character, because of your huge hit point scores anyways. Boots of Winterlands can be quite helpful if you're playing Palace of Ice, as the name itself might imply. <laughs> It's all about cold damage. Now, when it comes to weapons, of course you'll be going two-handed, but you can also go one-handed on a shield if you prefer, it's just not as high damage. In any case, Lightbringer Greatsword is the best choice for the Crown of the Magister campaign. The extra 1d8 radiant damage is nice, but you can also go with the Sand Raven Holy Axe, which is a plus 3, but doesn't really have any extra damage. Now, for Palace of Ice, the best choice is without a doubt the legendary weapon, Imperator. It's plus 3, deals an extra 1d12 damage, and has even a potential for an extra 1d6, thanks to the Doom Blade Cut ability. Now, it does have a unique ability of setting your strength to 21. It's just that it's not gonna matter for this character, right? Because you already have 20 at level 1. And as far as higher mounts, just go with the Belt of Fire Giant instead, or potions. So I wouldn't really attune to it, because the extra damage, 1d12 and the Doomblade ability, they don't require attuning. Now, if you want to go with a one-handed weapon, Skull Cleaver is definitely the best choice for Palace of Ice. The extra constitution bonus will actually help. And for Crown of the Magister, you have the Punisher Battle Axe, which is pretty much the best weapon for that campaign, at least. 
Well, all right, friends, so this was it from my Paladin Solasta guide. If you found it useful, as always, please remember to like, subscribe, and consider becoming a channel member if you can. I really appreciate your support. Thank you for watching and see you next time, friends. <laughs>